and welcome to Module 7 of the Digital Ready Program, which is Digital Marketing for China. Very excited about this, so uh, bear with me. So for those in the room who can speak Chinese, I apologise now because I can't. So I'll do my best. So anyone who can speak it, please you know, tell me when I'm saying it wrong. I'd rather that happen before we go any further and me looking like a silly person trying to pronounce these words. So, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, before we do get going, there's, you'll notice also on your desk there's a, a ton of information there for you. We've got the copies of the slides from Tracy's presentation just before, which you've already probably noticed. The ones that for mine will also be there on your desk, but there's also four other handouts there that you'll see as well. And that's from our TQ fact sheets that we've got. So I'll explain a couple of those a little bit more in detail in a moment so that you can get an idea. The other thing, we've got a couple of prezies for you on the table. I love giving presents. Um, there's some key, uh, some mouse pads there for you, so please take those with you. And what you'll also see now, I, I, we recently found out, these are a clock in a can. Now, we recently found out that these are actually um, not good to give to the Chinese consumer because it actually means that your time is running out. So, <laughs> or it's up or coming up or something like that. So, if anyone's really superstitious in the, in the room, don't take it if you don't want to. If anyone wants to take it, please, you know, be, take them with you. That's not a problem. Or we've got a whole box full in the back corner if you want to take more. So, uh, it's up to you. But uh, just so that you know, that's one thing that obviously etiquette-wise when you're dealing with the Chinese consumer, you need to be very aware of those sort of things. But we won't have the opportunity to go into the etiquette side today, but just you, that is something that you need to consider though, okay? Um, and then we've also got the A to DW fly there and underneath that is a survey card. So we'd really appreciate at the end of the session today, if you just take five minutes, not even that actually, won't even take that, just to fill out um, how useful or not that you found these sessions today and if you want to give us any other feedback. It's just so that we can then go back to our managers and say, yes, what we're doing is relevant and what we're doing is good. So it would be really appreciative if you could do that for us today. Okay, so let's get into it, shall we? So this is really exciting. I found the last few months doing the research with this, with Tracy and with some of the other team members at TQ, all this information that we're about to give you is probably going to be a ton of information. Some of it may not be new to you, some of it may be new to you. So. Uh, what we've done is we've tried to put as much as we can into the session so you're going to get the most out of it, okay? So where we're going to start is why China, of course, you know, why is it so important to us at the moment? Some additional things that you might need to know, we'll talk about the A to DW, then we're going to go into the really interesting side of stuff. So we're going to talk about websites, hosting, digital, digital agency options, web search, social media, online travel agents and then mobile. So as you can imagine, we've got a ton of things to go through this morning. So if you have got questions though, please stop me because I'd rather answer what we can through it. Um, or if you, if you feel happy enough to wait till the end, we can do that as well. So it's not a problem. Either way, I'm happy. And as long as you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so what we're hoping, this is what we're hoping that you'll achieve out of today. Now, if at any point, if you feel that we haven't achieved that, please stop me because that means I haven't done what I'm supposed to be doing up in front of you here today. So uh, I won't go through all those points because it's basically what I just said in the agenda that we're following through to today. Okay, so this is why you are here. <laughs> so we've got a population in China. Now this is changing constantly, obviously, but it's nearly 1.4 billion people in China. Now when you look at little old Australia next to it, we're 20 to nearly 23 million. So it sort of gives you a little bit of perspective and just why China is starting to become such an important market for us. So, and then I want to, <laughs> I thought this was quite interesting, but 513, and that's grown since this, well, I actually put this up here, it's about 515 million netizens now. That's your combination between uh, the China consumer and the internet user. So that's where it's come out of it. Netizens is what they're being dubbed as. So you've got 514, 15 million people who are active users on the internet. Now just think about that, 515 million people. That, to me, blows my mind. I don't know if that blows anybody else's mind, but it certainly does it to me. That's a lot of people. Now when you put it into perspective against the US, 
So the US, they're about 79, 78, 79 percent of their country is internet users. But you look at China, with that number of 515 million, they're only sitting at about 38, 39 percent. So they've still got a lot of growth. They've still got a lot of way to go. So there's the potential that we've got is just unbelievable. So that's why you're here. <laughs> now some of you are probably already dabbling in it. Or you're not dabbling is probably not the right word. You're probably actually active in this particular role at the moment. So in the room, who has actually got a Chinese hosted translated website? One, two, okay. Who has a Chinese translated not hosted in China website? One, two, okay. So everybody else, hopefully what we're going to try and help you do today is give you some ideas and some feedback on what they're expecting in the website side of things. So it's great to see that we've got a lot of people in the room who are still trying to get to that point. This is just a couple more stats which I found very, very interesting. So one of it, out of every two Chinese internet users has one more, more than one social media account. Now that's not so surprising because when you consider us, I mean I think I've got five or six different social media accounts. Um, you know, you probably have maybe one or two or three, so that is not so surprising. What is surprising is that they do log in and spend 2.7 hours per day online. Now, if you're a gamer, I've just recently read a stat that if you're a gamer, they spend seven hours per week online. Now, that's, that's a hefty number of hours if you're a gamer. Um, so it's kind of interesting. We've got 52,000 messages are posted every 60 seconds on microblogs. Just think about that. So in the moment that I just took to say that, there was a hundred odd thousand messages that were just put out there on microblog. So in other words, uh, the Cineweibo, which is the equivalent, not exactly the same as Twitter or the Ren Rens of the world, which is a similar to Facebook and so forth. So it's kind of, you know, the, the amount of play and give at the moment on the internet is, on, in China in particular, is massive. This also blew me away. 35 million web surges are made every hour every hour. Is anybody sort of getting the context that we're talking? <laughs> yeah, the, the number that we're actually talking about, that's, this is what blows me uh, totally away. Okay, now this is some of the things we don't cover today because obviously if we did, we'd be here for three days, not for two and a half hours or two hours. So we're not going to talk about general Chinese consumer behaviour and why they do the things they do when they're here in Australia. We're not going to talk about language, and I apologise before and I apologise again now for any of my interpretations. The history, because it plays a huge part in the Chinese culture and why they travel and how they travel and so forth, so we're not going to talk about that. The demographics or etiquette, so how to, uh, well like the clocks for instance, <laughs> the, you know, that sort of thing. We're not going to talk about that because it will take too long. We are strictly here today for the digital side of things. Okay. Now, big picture. So a lot of you or maybe some of you are already having some good strong markets within China or China for your business here in, on the Gold Coast. So that primarily might be the group side of things though. So the research that Tracy and her team came out with was we're talking about now in this particular session, excuse me, is to we're talking about the independent traveller. So the group market is good and it's steady and it's growing all the time and we're all seeing the growth of the group market. But what we're talking about now is the potential market of the FIT or the independent traveller. So that's where we're taking it to today. That's the difference. But it's not to say you can't do both. It's not to say you can't do one or the other, and it's not to say you can't do a sort of a, a, an amalgamation of the two. So just letting you know that, but there are certain things that could happen. So if you're looking at the group side of it, you're probably already working with the ITOs, the inbound tour operators. You're probably already working with the domestic travel agents. So when we say DTAs here, we're talking about the agents who are primarily for the Chinese visitor, for those families who live and speak in Australia. So it's their families coming across and visiting them while they're here in Australia. That's the DTA general, generally. And also wholesale, of course. Then we, if we look on the FIT or the independent traveller side, these are the things that we're going to talk about more so today. So the website side of things, social media, mobile, the online travel agents and hosting. 
So, and it's not to say though, that if you're in the group market side of it now, that you can't be a part of the social media scene. It's not to say that you can't do that, but this is just showing you some possible differences, okay? So just so that you know, uh, we recently in the last, I think it was May to July of this year, just so that you know, there was a domestic travel agent campaign that we did just as a, a, a bit of a trial run. And I've got some stats for you, so I'll just read those because I want to make sure I get those right for you. But what we did is we targeted five regions, Gold Coast, obviously, the Whit Sundays, Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, and I'm missing one. Oh, Cairns. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can't forget Cairns. So just so we just wanted to put this in. So we wanted to show you that the domestic side of it is just as important as getting those new consumers out from China. So just some, some interesting things. So the results from this, this was a, a campaign that went for May to June of this year, showcasing the five destinations. The results were, we had 653 passengers booked, which equaled just shy of 2,000 room nights. And we had then, from that, we had an average daily spend of around about $147 a day at three and a half days. So we're looking at just over or just under $340,000 return on the investment on this campaign. So the market is there domestically. So that's why we did it. So from that, those results, we will then be looking at doing a second one of these campaign. Not sure when that's going to happen, um, but I'm sure if you talk to Mary or Christy, they'll be able to let you know if and when that does happen again. So just to show you just the differences that could you, you could still be potentially a accessing if you don't go down the side of the FIT scenario. So lots of options and lots of opportunities. Okay, so firstly, we'll just get the ATDW out of the way. Uh, any, I should probably ask, anyone not a member of the ATDW? Oh, fantastic. I love it. The whole room, we're all ATDW members. So, well, you're probably all aware then, we had just some federal government uh, funding just recently for a million dollars. All the listings are being translated into simplified and traditional Chinese as we speak, um, which is fantastic. It's great news. Now, what they decided, they, were, they did initially say that the 30th of June was the cutoff um, and if you didn't have your listing in or if it wasn't updated before the 30th of June, you weren't going to be a part of it. They decided that wasn't fair, <laughs> which was good. So now what they're doing is they're rolling it out date-wise. So they're doing different sections at different times. So basically what that means for you, if you haven't joined or if you haven't recently updated your listing, and that I can't say that enough to update your listing, is so vitally important because it feeds so many different distributor sites on your behalf. So images, if you've got videos, if you've got social media buttons that you can add in, you know, maybe if you, you've been refurbished or maybe you've got a new tour added to your, your business, whatever, make sure this is your first port of call to actually update your information. Vital. Um, but what that basically means is if you fall in, say, for instance, the attractions and tours products descriptions category, you still have until the 30th of November to do any of that updating before they start translating. So at least now they've rolled it out in sections, so it makes a, a lot more sense and it gives you a little bit more time. Now, so <coughs> uh, that's the difference is you've got your product descriptions and then you've got your service descriptions. So the product is the, the description of the product itself and the service is like your features or your, like your room types. That's your, your difference in the two. Yeah. Um, now, now, that will be only on current listings. They have not said to us at this stage if they're going to do this as a, a yearly update and they're going to translate them again with, you know, changes. That has not been um, confirmed or denied at this stage. So, at this point, this is it. Um, so, we're just waiting on that to be confirmed, but yeah, we just don't know at this stage. <coughs> the other thing is, too, um, I get questions all the time about where is this data going to be housed? once it's been translated. So at this stage in the game, it will be with Tourism Australia. And then whoever is a distributor or anyone who takes the content from ATDW, they will have access to that information. But at this stage, you don't have actual, 
con content access itself. So if that if it does change, we'll be told. But at this point, no. Where it shines, where it shines, Queensland shines on me. Where Australia shines. Where Australia